Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jamie Parrott. I'm the Vice President and Chief Operating Officer for MedResults Network. And I just want to thank you all for being here today to join us for our educational webinar. And uh, today is sort of a, a unique presentation. I'm really excited to uh, invite our two guests who are speaking here today. And I'll tell you a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, but just to give you a quick agenda of what we're going to be talking about today, um, I was in Los Angeles on Wednesday last week, and we held our uh, evening dinner presentations with our partners at Viviv, and we had a full room of MedResults Network members, and I noticed that after speaking with a dozen of them, uh, many of them uh, loved their membership in MedResults, but didn't fully understand the benefits of being a member or hadn't taken advantage of the benefits. So. I'm going to spend the first couple minutes just uh, going over med results quickly and a couple quick ways that you can save through the network as a reminder for our attendees today. And then we're going to dive right in the presentation. Uh, our guests, Brian Shea and Mike Gruber, are here and they're going to speak, be speaking about science and how uh, you can use it to your advantage in developing a successful marketing program for your practice. Um, and then, of course, they're going to talk about headlines and email design trends video and IP targeting, and uh, IP targeting is really, I think, a, a, a secret in marketing that probably many of you have never heard of, but I think you'll be very impressed once you learn a little bit more about it uh, this afternoon. And then finally, you'll hear a little bit about Mike and Brian and uh, what they do and have done for us and uh, for partners of ours. So just to move it along, I'll give you a little update on med results for those of you who uh, have heard this. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll breeze through it quickly, but for those of you uh, who have not heard this, med results network has actually been around since 2008, and uh, we started with about 30 members, all of whom were, were medical spas based in Southern California. And uh, as the buying group developed, we started with two vendor partnerships who offered benefits to our members. And you fast forward to 2017 today, we now have 3,000 members across the U.S. and over 50 vendor partnerships uh, with manu manufacturers and vendors in this industry. And all of them offer some sort of benefit to our members. So just to kind of break down your membership, most of you know this, but there is no fee to belong to MedResults. It's been that way since inception, uh, and there's no uh, obligation for you to purchase from any of our vendors, although, as you've seen from our newsletters and our communications, we encourage you to do that, because not only will you get some sort of additional cost savings, but you'll likely get some additional um, exciting benefits through the network and through being a member, like education, like training. So, uh, to tell you a little bit about the process, uh, we work with, as I mentioned, about 50 different vendor partners, and um, the way we, we choose our vendors is very unique in that all of our partners go through an extensive vetting process. So it's not that we just uh, look at a list of vendors that are going to be attending a conference and start, you know, picking out the ones that we, quote, need to fill our, uh, our network out. We're really doing a lot of due diligence in, in terms of how we choose our partners. We want industry leaders. We want leaders who have unique niche products uh, that our members have requested or are requesting. Uh, we also look for companies who uh, have science to back up their technologies or their products and who can provide us case studies where their products have uh, benefited their customers in some way, whether it be uh, you know, results, uh, patient results outcomes, you name it. Um, and we certainly, we speak to a lot of KOLs and industry leaders, not just KOLs for the companies that we work with, but also KOLs within MedResults Network and providers who have used some of these products and services. And, and uh, if everything aligns and, and we feel uh, that we can trust these partners, that they do provide excellent products and excellent service to our members, we'll go ahead and move forward with them. And so uh, that's why we invite these types of partners and affiliates like Mike and Brian to uh, speak with you and of course to work with you in the future. So for those of you who have not taken advantage of many of our partners, we have, uh, we thought this was kind of a unique thing to do. We have a quick checkup to quick savings. And this is, these are five simple ways uh, that our members can save through the network. And we get calls every day about uh, you know, MERS and injectables and allergen and skincare. And those are the typical types of products that our members are asking for. But I think some of the easiest ways to 
to save money through our network come from supplies, think office supplies, think med spa supplies, medical supplies, uh, and insurance. And all of those are listed up here for a reason. Um, in the last year, we actually finalized an agreement, which you guys have probably all heard about with Cardinal Health. And what we've seen from that is our members who are uh, surgical members have saved thirty dollars to $40,000 a year. I mean, that, that type of savings is, is so significant. You could practically use the savings to go out and buy a piece of capital equipment. And uh, the same for some of our other partnerships with office supplies uh, and med search supplies. I just encourage you all to take a look um, at our vendor list and, uh, and see if you can opt into some of these partnerships because it's not going to affect how you do things or how you operate very much in your practice, but I promise you it will affect your bottom line. So anyway, that's just a brief overview of, of what we do for our members, and it kind of leads into my presentation today. Uh, Mike and Brian work with a company, or come from a company rather, that is focused on marketing and uh, some very unique facets of marketing. And although they're not a partner of ours that you're going to find on our website under our vendor page, they have been an affiliate of ours for quite some time. And we've actually worked with them to do uh, some unique campaigns for med results. And uh, they work with some of our partners as well. So, you know, these are two of the most creative guys uh, I could think of who have some really fantastic uh, information uh, in terms of marketing and can provide a lot of value to your practice. And that's why I am uh, delighted to introduce them today. So with that said, I'd like to introduce uh, Mike Gruber and Brian Shea. Hello. Um, you, you're familiar with this saying, I'm sure. If any, you've got marketers in the room and have been around marketing, uh, we just don't, you know, half my advertising is wasted, I just don't know which half. Um, we're hoping with this short presentation, we can get a little more science into your marketing process um, and help, hopefully increase sales. To start off with headlines, what kind of prompted this webinar was an an article we got several months ago. Um, it was a test. BuzzSumo is a well-known website, uh, does research, and they analyzed 100 million article headlines from you know just over a seven-day period. And it's Facebook and Twitter. And what they're trying to track is engagement. You know what? How does a headline engage a viewer? And what they count as engagement is likes, shares, and comments. And we're going to go into some of this, um, but some of the things they talked about, and I'll do some individual slides here. This particular one is the top headline phrases. And again, this is out of 100 million headlines. Um, the top phrase was, we'll make you. So these are the top three words out of all the things they saw, that these three words were included in the headline. And the, the, the reason they think it was significant was is it linked content with the potential impact on the reader. So we'll make you, it kind of lures you in and makes you want to see what the second part of that headline is. And you see a couple of examples here. You've got, you know, <clears throat> 24 pictures that will make you feel better about the world. Um, what this airline did for its passengers will make you tear up. So heartwarming. Six hard truths that will make you a better person. And then, you know, there, a lot of these findings were emotional headlines. So using emotion in your headlines to, to create, you know, interactions and engagement. In addition to some of the best ones, they, here's the worst. Um, and so you, these are three word phrases that didn't do well. And again, the bar graph goes from left to right in number of engagements. You know, what did they, did they do any shares that they click and things like that? We're going to look on this one in particular because we're going to show you that one social media versus another, they don't, they're not all, they're totally different. In this case, on a budget didn't do well on Facebook, but it did really well on Pinterest. We're going to show you this tool in a minute. It's a free tool that you can access yourself to check phrases and keywords and things like that. But in this particular one, it shows a great, um, here's Facebook engagement. So they had 143 on this headline. But if you go over to Pinterest, you see almost 645,000, you know, engagements and interactions with that. So what you're doing between each social media medium is 
you know, you need to track that. You need to understand that there are differences. One headline may do really well here or, or here and not do well here. So you've got to talk to each specific audience. Top phrases, starting headlines, X reasons why. These are nice. These are good starters. So when you're trying to do your headline, you're trying to come up with some. Here's here's a great, you know, gets you started with something that's more scientific. You know, again, we're trying to take the guesswork. You no longer have to guess as much. You can start to kind of see science. Top first word in headlines. You know, this makes sense. This is topical, but that's another thing. It's another way to get people into your headline is use topical things. This is interesting. This is probably, this is called us by surprise. It may catch you. How many words should be in your headlines? More than you think. So this is number of words in the headline. And it is number of engagements. And it goes up, really peaks at about 15 words. So this is great intel so if you're crafting your headlines, because lots of times people say, you know, use three, four, five words in your headline, get in and get gone. But this says no, because it's social and it's interactive, they're kind of you've got a little more leverage there. Most engaging numbers in headlines. You know, so here's just which numbers do best. 10 is good because it's like the top 10. You're going to see the top 10 on a lot of different things. So that makes sense. But it's, it's good to know this. Again, you're not guessing. This is the tool we were talking about. It's called BuzzSumo. You can go to this search engine. It's free. Just go to this URL. Down here on the first page, you, there's a little box here. You can put in what you want. We're using this. This is a popular procedure right now. But we want, we were curious. It's growing in popularity this year in particular, but we want to see what it did. So you type that in there, and then the results come back. And you get headlines. These are some of the top headlines with that phrase in there. And then you can see the number of engagements, you know, what's going on between LinkedIn. So this, this is clearly pretty new. But it looks like Facebook right now is kind of the leader taking the lead on this, this particular topic. So you can use this tool when you're trying to create your headlines. And then kind of look, they asked a bunch of research, uh, experts to kind of summarize this 100 million headline research. And, it's, and essentially, these are just a few of the things, takeaways. But spend time on headlines. Headlines do matter. Very important. Test what resonates with your particular audience in that particular medium. You know, print versus social media versus TV versus online video. Get creative with your headlines. This is significant. Readers do a split second, split second cost benefit calculation with headlines. Is this thing worth two seconds of my time? Ask yourself that. If you write that, you know, that's what they're asking themselves. Otherwise, I'm, I'm gone. Tell stories. Uh, this is good too. Yes, you can tell a story in 15 word headline. Hemingway did it in six words with this for sale baby shoes never worn. Very powerful headline. Um, headlines and the email subject are also critical for the success of the email campaign. You need to entice them enough to open the email, especially with new prospects. And you need to use words that won't trigger spam filters. Most email marketing solutions will test your message for those uh, bad words. So you can make those adjustments so you can ensure that your email is going to land in the inbox. And once the target opens the email, you want them to take some sort of action if possible. Today, it's more important than ever to capture the attention of your audience. Less copy, in many cases, is more with today's short attention span. And these are some of the visual tactics that are the hottest trends in email in 2017. This is all done from the scientific research. Um, for instance, on this one, you've got to make a sweet background, you know, give it a little color, give it a little context, and, uh, and make it attractive. You can use gradient backgrounds. You can get a lot more creative today than your old boring state emails than you did in the past. People expect it in today's environment. Uh, photo backgrounds. Uh, it used to be that you had to be very careful with email because of the size of the images that with high speed uh, internet and so forth, you don't have to be really uh, concerned about some imagery in your email. And this is a really nice photo that can capture the attention. Um, use animated GIF backgrounds even. Uber uses this. It catch, you know, obviously it's an attention grabber. And uh, 
So it's a, it's another tactic that, that is being utilized more often today. Um, beautiful fonts, you can get way more creative, especially since you can use more imagery. Uh, so here's some other elements that uh, can help um, bring you more attention. Um, emojis and icons, you know, that's really big in social media today. It's transferring to email. So you want to just stay with the trends, you, you're, especially, you know, some of the you know, aesthetic health care, your audience could be younger. And so you want to make sure you speak to them. And then uh, play catches with content. Uh, response to design, uh, when you've got mobile, you got tablets and so forth, you really need to make sure that your emails are formatted correctly so they stack properly. For instance, you know, the email on the right, uh, uh, well, it, it stacks differently once you actually get in, into like your, your smartphone. So you need to make a design that, uh, you know, scales down appropriately depending on the medium that they're using at that time. Jamie, any questions at this point? I don't want to get too far down the road. Everything's sounding okay here. No, everything uh, so far so good. I, 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 we can kind of go over this at the end of the presentation, but I, I think you guys have hit the nail on the head. Keep going. Okay, thanks. So next up is video. Everybody's heard about video, but what you may not know are some of the numbers behind it. You're hearing it. We've just got a few here to kind of tease you. Um, but we, we, you know, a lot of these ad campaigns we're getting ready to talk to you about, you'll send them to a specific landing page. And putting a video on your landing page can increase conversion rates by up to 80%. So video is not just kind of a nice thing to have. It's critical to have. 90% uh, of customers report that product videos help them make purchasing decisions. 64% of customers are more likely to buy a product online after watching a video about it. So it's, you know, and the spending obviously is increasing each year. Um, and this last one is pretty significant. Uh, this is a Forrester research quote. This, this research said it estimates that a single minute of video content is the equivalent of 1.8 million words. So, you know, picture tells, you know, the old picture tells versus video. Video is huge. So keep that in mind. That's a, you really, if you're not using video now, you know, or how are you using it? increase it because it's just exploding. And also what has happened with video is, you know, there's a whole bunch of cottage industries popping up and it's a lot more affordable now to create video than it ever has been. So in the, these are a couple of samples of some of the work we've done, but it's testimonial formats, very popular still. Um, and whiteboard is exploding. You've got what's called explainer videos, all types of new video formats that are out there and can be done very affordably. Um, a, a new marketing technique that's uh, taking uh, hold these days is IP targeting. Um, if you know anything about marketing, you know the frequency of your message is, is vitally important. And IP targeting allows you to get amazing amount of frequency for pennies on the dollar of what it used to cost. Um, and just in a nutshell, IP targeting is basically digital direct mail. So, you know, you've got your, your, your targeted prospect lives some here, uh, the same prospect lives there, and he might have attended an event, a trade show, a concert, what have you, at another venue. So you can reach that individual wherever he or she goes with little overspray. Um, Again, the street address equals an IP address. Every single home has their own specific IP address. And so uh, with, through IP targeting, you can serve ads through 30 ad networks. It, it'll show up when you go on the, into the internet on your phone or on your, your home computer, and you'll see the banner ads that are at the top of pages or inside the articles and so forth. So these ads will be fed through a variety of uh, online ad platforms and will reach 92% of every site that contains advertising in the country. It's a cookie-less technology. And if you don't know anything about cookies, cookies are what they drop into your computer. Most ad campaigns will drop a cookie into your browser 
And what it does, it allows for web bots to be part of the participants who go to your, uh, they eat a lot of your, your ad costs. For instance, say if you run a Google campaign, as many as 50% of those ad uh, conversions or, or click-throughs or whatever are actually web bots, they're not humans. So uh, with IP targeting, every person that clicks on your ad will be a human. Um, the, t the technology gives you, I uh, we will serve only the IP ad if we're 95% accurate, if, if it has 95% accuracy. So we won't serve an ad if it's 94% that person, so you can pretty much be guaranteed that the person who receives your ad is the target that you're trying to uh, reach. And we can get these lists, we can either have the list purchased, or you can use a list of existing clients that can be used um, in these campaigns. It's 50 to 100 times more targeted with far more frequency than television. It's up to 60 more times effective. And the cl average click-through rate is 3.2 times higher than industry averages. So it's a really great way to get air cover it's, it, you need to pair it with other mechanisms like direct mail and so forth, but you can really warm up a lead by getting your name out there in front of them and, and your message. Um, captive audience is another version of IP targeting. For instance, if there is a trade show or a, an event that you want to reach, you could actually serve ads to only that venue over a specific amount of time, and we can give you estimates on how many uh, impressions you will receive during that thing. And it's a really great way to laser focus on specific uh, industries. And then Venue Replay is the most recent addition to IP targeting, and I'm really a big fan of this, is that you can go back in time as many as six months. So for instance, if I had a trade show that I missed or I had an event that I missed, I can actually go into the internet archive and, and get device IDs, phones or tablets, of those who attended the trade show, and then our system will allow us to match a large percentage of those device IDs to their, to their household IP address. So then you can only serve them on their when they're mobile, but you can serve ads to them while they're at home. And that is a really laser-focused way to, to market using IP targeting. Um, here are some ads uh, that we did for, for a campaign that we did for a client. Um, and with every single campaign that we do, we like to do two versions. We like to do A-B split testing in the early going so we understand which message, message resonates the best. In this case, uh, the client um, thought that price was the best message. So we created a series of ads based on that. And our intuition said that we thought, well, it takes six to seven years for some to act on a loss of hearing. So a lot of times people won't do anything until their life becomes where they can't hear anything. You know, they go to an event and they're sitting there in the chair. I don't, if, if anybody has grandparents, I know my grandma was this way. She would just sit there. She could not participate in the conversation. So we thought, we, we thought well, let's go more personal and get back into the conversation. So we ran this ad for a couple of days, and uh, and then we paused it for a second to, to look at the stats. And the get back into the conversation uh, headline was three times more effective. So what we did was we, we pulled the price ad and uh, and put more emphasis on get, getting back into the conversation because it was proven to be more effective. So we can actually, as we're running these campaigns, we can really manage these campaigns and, and, I'll, and, and I'll watch them every day to see how they're performing. If I see anything that says, okay, this thing's not performing as well as it can be, we'll, we'll pause it and make an adjustment and then, uh, and then see whether we see improvement on, on, on the adjustments that we made. <clears throat> yeah, IP targeting, very, very rich technology. Not many people know about it. And there's two types of IP targeting out there. This was very unique. Only one group in the country actually offering it. Um, A-B split testing, Brian talked about that. It's real important that you can get the creative out there, but if you're not putting multiple sets of creative out there, you're losing a lot of leads 
and dollars. Uh, again, in AB split testing, if you're not super familiar with it, you've got one, your, your usual suspect ad, which is called the control, and that's kind of your gut or your, hopefully you've got a history, a rich history of testing ads, and this is your, your, you know, your control, and then you run new ones against it. You can have ABC, you can have different ads, and we use a bunch of technologies that make it easy to swap ads and compare them to each other. Um, there's a couple of examples here. Uh, call to action buttons are big. You know, you want to do different colors, different sizes. What are the words on the buttons? All those are real important. We found that if you use the phrase, um, you know, it, it, learn more is less intimidating than, you know, it's just, it's a nice, it leads you in. That doesn't mean I have to buy something yet. I'm not ready to buy, but learn more kind of leads me in. So I'll click that. So test different words, different colors. Here's an example from Bing, the search engine, Microsoft search engine. They played with just different shades, light color changes, darker blues and greens in titles and captions, and increased sales by more than 10 million annually. Just changing from this control color to this color. You know, same, just faint changes, little changes. Um, Amazon moved their credit card offers from the home page to the shopping cart page and boosted by tens of millions of dollars a year. Again, they tested it. They tested it on the home page, they tested it on there, and, and it was a clear winner away from the home page. People weren't ready for that yet. So split testing, use this as another way to get science into your sales and increase sales. Use split testing on your ads, on your landing pages, emails, everything. It's really important to do that. Um, this is real quick about us. Uh, we're going to send out this presentation. Jamie's going to send it out in a PDF form. Um, so I, I don't want to take much time on this. We'd like to, if anybody's got questions, we'd rather talk about those. But there is a little, what we do is we work with an entire network of different specialized vendors that own their own business. Um, and so they're very responsive and get things done very quickly for us at a price, uh, Midwestern prices that are very hard to beat. Um, these are just some of the, the, the areas we're in. Again, we'll send this out if you're interested in it. Some of the work we've done, physician practice management, networks, um, just different. We're in senior living right now, very big in senior living, boomers. And then national group purchasing, you familiar with med results. And then I've got a lot of e-commerce background. And again, we can help you with you know, taking suspects to prospects to customers and then evangelical customers. Jane? Well, Mike, uh, thank you. I, I uh, appreciate all the information you've shared. I know um, to all of our attendees, Mike and Brian, uh, or Mike rushed through some of those last uh, presentation examples and things that they have done for customers, including MedResolve. Um, but I, I just want to go back to IP targeting for a second. And they, uh, Mike and Brian, you guys gave a, a good description of what you guys do. But I want to give you guys sort of a real world example where it would fit for you guys. And certainly as a, a business or a business to business, which, uh, which is where it applies for us and for you guys, this is a more relevant example, I think. Um, so, for instance, let's say you're in Chicago uh, and there's a wedding show in the middle of Chicago. And all of the women who are going to be attending that wedding show are perfect candidates, let's assume, for injectables or skin care or some sort of treatments that you offer. Uh, if, if you decided to do IP targeting, let's say that show happened three months ago, you could actually go ahead and pull all the IP addresses of all the attendees of that show, which happened three months ago, and you could target those with ads to go to your practice for specific products or specific treatments whatever you guys wanted to share, you could actually capture all of those attendees, both on their uh, mobile devices, their other devices, their home devices, office devices, whatever it is, and, and have that guarantee that you're pretty much reaching that customer. So I, I think that's powerful. We've done it ourselves. We, uh, we sort of did an, a, a split test. We tried it out and did it at a conference to see if we could get eyeballs on one of our ad campaigns. And uh, you know, the results were just shocking to us that it actually works. Uh, but I think for you guys, especially as medical practices, 
the opportunity is is uh, is huge, um, especially where events are concerned and and uh, with your own patient base, you guys have have the database ready to go. You could do the IP targeting almost seamlessly. So, just wanted to uh, to share that with you because uh, we're pretty impressed, and uh, I think you guys would be too. Certainly, uh, if you have questions, what we did is we set up a an automated survey that's going to pop up. Uh, right after we close this presentation, it's the same survey that pops up after every MedResults Network educational webinar. And uh, once that pops up, there's really only four questions uh, just asking you, uh, you know, if you have some interest in learning a little bit more, if you have questions for Mike and Brian, and that's a great way to uh, connect with them directly. Uh, alternatively, you can certainly reach out to me anytime. I'm happy to put you in touch. Uh, or share some information with you. And as Mike said, we will be sending out the, both the recording and the presentation to everybody. So if you want to take a deeper dive into some of the information that was shared today, you certainly can. So once again, thank you for uh, all of our attendees for being here today. Uh, I look forward to having you at our next MedResults Network educational presentation. Thanks again. Have a great afternoon. Thank you.